Lori Houston's News for the Heart is dedicated to helping you give a voice to your own soul. Our hearts have the power to free us from pain and the struggles that keep us from awakening to our true essence. Join Lori now as we delve into our heart and soul to find the path that will open us to the possibilities and lead us to the life we love to live. Good afternoon. This is News for the Heart. And today I have Tara Green. Now, Tara and I have been friends for a really long time. Yeah. And um, Tara is a great astrologer and a great tarot reader. And actually, we had a piece done where the two of us, plus I think one or two other people were done that was in one of the papers. Okay. And our readings, like I read, he didn't, he didn't remember exactly who said what, but from what I read, our readings were almost identical. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> like it was like, well, that's cool. Yeah. So no, we're very similar. That. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Two peas in a pod. There you go. <laughs> so I'm very happy to have you on here. And I'm so happy to be here too, Lori. And we get to celebrate the new year. So this is going to be all about 2016. So I'm, this may become a yearly thing. Just letting you know. Sure. Okay. Good with me. <laughs> okay. You got a date. All right. Cool. Okay. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, so let's talk about, well, you, let's talk about you. Tell me, tell the listeners how they can get a hold of you. You have a website. Okay. Yeah, I have a website uh, in transition of, of being built. But anyway, you can go to terratarot.com. That's mm. T-A-R-A-T-A-R-O-T.com. Um, and I also have a blog. I write all those daily on my blog, but you'll find that through my website as well. And I'm nice. in Toronto and available by Skype uh, for readings around the world. Cool. And you also, um, you do a lot of blogging on your Google Hangouts. Uh, okay. The, the blog that I do on, on WordPress gets, I forward it to Google. Nice. So yes, it's also okay. on Google. Cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, and I haven't been using Google Plus at all. Else. No, no, no. Well, I'd like to try all those things, you well, know, see, just to see. You and know? that's it. See, you've done all the Google Plus stuff. You just haven't done the Hangouts. So now I you're going to try the Hangouts. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to try the Hangouts because there's something, a really nice alignment of planets. Right. So really, I'm also a ceremonialist, a ritualist. Yes. So I like to, astrology is not just, you know, this abstract, this is happening, that's happening. It's You have to embody, you have to call down the planets. And so that that's really what um, I feel my direction is more and to help people to really nice. live it and their archetypes you nice. know yeah nice yeah very Good. nice okay so, so let's let's hear about 2016 all right well 2016 um is really you know i use numerology so 2016 when you reduce it to its lowest common denominator yes. is the number nine yes okay and the number nine is really the last in the sequence of numbers right. okay so the number nine in the tarot is called the hermit mm -hmm. now the hermit is also related to the sign of Virgo. Yes. So the hermit is all about perfection, about completion. We are finishing a long-term cycle that we started in 2007. Right. So we want to think about where we were then. 2007 was just before 2008 when the kind of market crashed and that whole thing happened. So you want to think about what you've been doing for this last nine, 10 year cycle right. to, and to finish up any old unfinished business before we move on to 2017. Right. Okay, that's one thing. Now, um, so the hermit, it doesn't mean you have to go live in a cave, although that would be <laughs> that would be highly recommended. I think this is really? definitely the year to go on a vision quest. Yes, it's definitely your introspection of pulling in, literally going into the cave, into the body, it's earth. Okay. So Virgo energy, it's very much about being very pragmatic. It's the year of humility. So throw away all those selfie sticks and no more selfies for you this year. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, it's very much about, forget about you. Uh -huh. It's about how can I serve? Okay. Okay. So 2016, the year of being of service, you know, okay. and it's about a year of community and it's Virgo. So it's grassroots, so a lot of grassroots community building, you know, we should all be getting ready to move into those communes and living together and really? sharing our resources and mm -hmm. downsizing. That's Virgo. You know, you're, okay. you're tightening that belt. You know, you don't need all that extra crap. Everybody's pretty much overwhelmed with it. So really it's about, you know, being practical. Right. You don't need all the frills. Okay? okay. So it's kind of no frills here. Uh, what do I really need just to sustain myself? So I'm not distracted, right. you know, in a, in a whirlwind of constant noise, distraction, cell phone towers, you know, all that stuff, you know, kids on selfies. It's like, no, 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 no. Hmm. Like get back, get back to the garden. That's really what it's about. 
You nice. know what I mean? Get back to the garden. So you need to get out in nature as much as you can or imagine it or bring it in somehow. You know, you need plants, greenery. Uh, Virgo is the sign See of... See my, yes, my hibiscus? Yes, you have a lovely hibiscus there. That I that I read to bring inside, you just cut it all down and it was like completely bare. And now all of a sudden I have all this, yeah, but it's not supposed to be growing in winter. (laughs) Well, but you've brought it in and it's warm. So the plant thinks it's in summer, you know. Is that what it thinks? Oh yeah. Because it was saying that it had to be a certain temperature and keep it really dry. And it's just, it's not going to do any, it's not going to do any new growth until um, late winter. Okay. early spring but it's but obviously I mean, happy it, you know, it, it must happy be happy and it's your energy and you know plants <laughs> respond to music and, and to love and so you know that really, must be it yeah you brought the green in here Lori. <laughs> so so virgo is also the sign of health so right. people are going to be very much focusing on their diet on mm. discipline that's a virgo thing okay so what you eat so really going back to organic simple right. there's going to be a big movement against monsanto which is you know Good. started in other parts of the world we need yes, to get smart on really that do. too um, really need to. <laughs> yeah, so we, a good year to do a lot of cleansing. Right. Virgo rules the intestines. So right. good year to do colonics, cleansings of different kinds. Give your kind of guts a rest because right. the guts traditionally are, you know, uh, the original oracles uh, read guts, they read intestines. So mm-hmm. that's the where you digest everything. And that's right. Virgo. So it's a year of digesting Okay. all of this information. Mm-hmm. You know, Virgo is ruled by the planet Mercury. Right. So it's about organizing everything, getting rid of clutter. Um, so starting the the year off in Mercury retrograde. <laughs> yes, exactly. But <laughs> because today Mercury is going retrograde, yes. and there's going to be four retrogrades this year. I know one extra one. I know. Um, don't be in such a hurry. Don't worry. I, I I didn't make any New Year's resolutions this year because I knew you know you're just going to have to go back. We're not really ready to get into this year yet. So oh, really? it's kind of a nice. We've got a kind of liminal space here while well, Mercury's retrograde till the end of January, and then. Jupiter's also going retrograde on Thursday uh, for the next mm. few months too. So there's a and Mars is also going to go retrograde this year, yeah. which also doesn't happen it happens every, every year and a half year, or so, a year yeah. and a half to two years. So yeah. so that's another thing. This is going to be a lot of pullback. That's why I'm saying it's about closing. It's about at least it's not Venus this year. At least it's not Venus. <laughs> well, but Mars is just the masculine side. I know, of but Venus, so. Venus really affects women a lot, and it seemed to it uh, seem to have I don't know because the last time. Was it just the year before that both of them went retrograde? Yeah. I was that was brutal because yeah. we just like one after the other after yeah. the other. And anyway, that was brutal. <laughs> but but Mars going retrograde also that's where the action is. So the action is the also action. slow. So I would say it's kind of going to be a slow year. Oh, the, for so the don't first half. expect yeah. Well, until Jupiter moves into Libra on September the 9th. But oh, I would say it's kind of like yeah. So this <laughs> oh. is like a nine month, eight months, nine months of one kind of energy okay. and then shifting. So it's also mutable. Okay? okay. So the keyword is also mutable. Mutability. Jupiter and Virgo, uh, Saturn and Sagittarius, Neptune and Pisces. Those are the big three planets this year, all in mutable signs. So you have to go with the flow. And, you know, it's very much also, we're still in those Uranus, Pluto, Cardinal crosses. Oh, we That's are still, still going on. Really? Yep. yep. They're still wow. very close right now. So, you know, and often we don't feel that energy until it's the time has passed. Like that's what happened in the 60s. Okay. Okay. So really it's still, you know, mm. chaos. Mm. There's still chaos, you know. Um, so Jupiter and Virgo. So really I would say a lot of it is about accountability, um, tightening your belt, living very simply, um, <laughs> getting back to basics. You know, mm. what do I really need? So, and Jupiter rules work. So a lot of okay. people are going to be reconsidering jobs. You know, am I happy with what I'm doing? You know, Jupiter is the planet of optimism right. and faith. And though, even though Jupiter is not considered to be strong right. uh, in Virgo, it's still faith playing, taking a risk, take a risk on your job. Don't like what you're doing. This is the time to change it, you know, or at nice. least make sure you're going to complete to get started in a new place next year. Okay. Right. So that's all important. Now, um, the hermit. So taking time to tune in, it's very important to meditate, to take that quiet time, to go within. All the answers are inside of you. And the hermit traditionally is, you know, is a beautiful symbol. You know, the hermit is always a the old man with the beard yes. carrying the lantern. Yes. So it's always yes. to me a symbol of protection. You're never really alone. Okay. If you call on I the like hermit, that. you know. I like that. Yeah. So um, I always think teacher student when I see the hermit. The hermit, yeah. Well, there is a lot of energy around teaching right. this year as well. Oh, okay. Cool. So Saturn, Sagittarius. Okay. Oh, yeah. Truth. So <laughs> Saturn just really started to go into Sagittarius. It's going to be there until the end of 2017. 
And Saturn is the karmic, the cosmic cop. Yeah. So wherever Saturn is, that's where we're all going to be tested. <laughs> and that's where the limits are. And that's the obstacles. And that's where we're being forced to grow up. But it's also a little bit, because it's in Sagittarius, it's more global versus personal. Or do you think there's well, a lot of personal as well? It's Well, it's always both. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. It's always both. Like, for example, if you're a Virgo, yeah. of course, <laughs> Jupiter and Virgo is really great for you this year. Right? Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, because Jupiter's expanding. Right. So, right. you know, for people who were born with Jupiter and Virgo, yeah. Um, that's also, you know, very good for them. And there's a whole generation uh, born with that uh, over every 12 years. Um, but also the 60s, I'm just going to backtrack a bit. The 60s were created when Uranus and Pluto were together in the middle degrees of Virgo. Oh, interesting. With Saturn opposite in Pisces. Okay. Oh, okay. So Jupiter and Saturn and Chiron are right. going to be activating those degrees. So everybody was born in 65, 66, mm -hmm. who are hitting their, their first, their Chiron return right. now, actually, as well. It's going to be a really vulnerable time. That whole 60s generation, because that was just the beginning. That was the seed phase. Right. The revolution is really supposed to happen now. Right. Okay. So it's got to take roots. you got to water it. you got to nurture it. you got to feed it. So all of that stuff too, right? Okay. So yes, there's always a personal, everybody's got right. Virgo somewhere in their chart. So yeah, you got to look at where, you know, where it is, yes. is it, which house it's in, which aspects it's right. making. But um, yes, because uh, Sagittarius is a sign of um, international relations, foreigners, right. travelers, gypsies, refugees, um, you know, Sagittarius rules airplanes. It rules. Um, well, the biggest um, religious stock fundamentalism. Market, the biggest stock market crashes have always happened with uh, um, Saturn, Saturn and Sagittarius. Sag. Right. Okay. The and, largest. Uh, and we're expecting a big financial. Well, yeah. yeah. Everybody this is. Year. I know. I don't know if it's this year. I get it's either the end of this year or beginning of next. Okay. That's what I'm my feeling, but yeah. Um, well, I've been saying it for years because yeah. we're in this big bubble, you know, and <laughs> I the know. big bubble is I Neptune. I mean, it's been happening, okay. right? It's been yeah. happening for a long well, time. Well, China, I think, just had a huge today i think crashed really? even more yeah okay. and, you know so canada now even though we were on top of it in 2008 is now kind of going through the downside mm -hmm. of putting all your eggs into the oil the oily right. basket you know um you know and and oil is is pisces uh okay. energy so neptune and pisces so um every seven years um as there's different cycles of uranus actually um there's bubbles and and then fall downs in, in markets. Right. So we've been in the, uh, the oil thing. Now that's over. Okay. So oil is, forget it. It's over. Um, but yeah, Pisces. Okay. So Neptune and Pisces. So the big action this year is really Saturn and Sagittarius, Neptune and Pisces. So reality versus illusion, right. reality versus the dream. Hmm. So Sagittarius is known for being the space cadet. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm a really? Triple, I'm a triple Sag here. <laughs> That's funny. I remember being called that space cadet years ago. Um, but but Virgo, <laughs> Jupiter, which rules Sagittarius and Pisces, kind of gets the. I have to be honest. I'm a Sag. <laughs> Excuse me. Of course, you know. So I have to be totally honest. So um, although Saturn and Sagittarius should limit that, you know what I mean, right. hoof and mouth disease. Right. You know right. what I mean. Um, but for everybody, you know, Jupiter in Virgo, Jupiter kind of is ruling the roost, kind of ruling both those signs this oh, okay. uh, for the first uh, part of the year. But um, so Saturn limits your dream. You know, if your dream isn't real, if it isn't solid, if it isn't lead, you know, like Saturn, if it doesn't stand the test of Saturn mm -hmm. going, you have to work really hard, you really want this, you know, um, then forget it. It's going right. to be washed away in, in this, just the ocean, you know. So there's many, many meanings to that, you know. Um, Saturn, Sagittarius is also the sign of religion, right. of faith. So, right. you know, religious class, there's more of that, you know, the Muslims, the refugees, mm -hmm. all of that more coming to a head, mm. be, you know. Over the next two years. Yeah, yeah over the next two years. It's not going away. And so Saturn, Saturn. The truth has to come out. The I mean, truth has to come it's, out. Yes. It's all about, that's what Sagittarius is all about. Too, the truth right? will the come truth. out. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of corporations getting nailed for all their, the lies and the deception and international but banking. But even the religion. I mean, the truth has to, it has to change. Everything has to yeah. change. Well, I think actually I read that the, um, they said that actually it might be 25 or 30% of people uh, qualify themselves as atheists or not belonging <laughs> to any religion. Right. Right. Yeah. So I think a lot ways, of men say that more than uh, women. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, <laughs> uh, you know, so yeah, I think the truth is, is going to out and people are going to wake up, but the people who are still holding on in fear, yeah, this is where the problem is. Yeah. Right. The people who buy into the 
the literalism and all that stuff. So, right. um, but I think that's a good thing, you know, and, and Saturn and Sagittarius, Sagittarius is the optimist sign, you know, humor, right. serious humor this year, um, you know, traveling may be limited, that Saturn and Sagittarius, okay. you know, limits to travel, uh, higher education. So there should be a revamping of the higher education, mm -hmm. the university system, the more free universities um, mm -hmm. in a way, because the costs are so exorbitant to, mm -hmm. to go to school. Yeah, and totally. Sagittarius rules publishing and it rules teachers. Yeah. So people who have reached a certain age of maturity now are going, well, you know what, I have to teach what I know. Right. But you have to be, you have to have your stuff together. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but a lot of people who are believing in the dream and who've been in denial, that's Neptune right. and Pisces, the people that are addicted to the consumerism and the, the drugs, you know, the prescription drugs, which is horrendous, you know. So Saturn and Sag, I believe, will bring in new legislation against a lot of drug companies are going to really get hit, which is good. Um, the whole thing with all the, you know, people who are on uh, ADD and all those right. whatever antidepressant drugs and whatever, you know, how bad they are for them, that's going to probably be legislated out, which is a good thing. That's good. Um, and a lot of school reform. So again, it could be a grassroots, a lot of people going, this system stinks, a lot of more homeschooling, alternative schooling coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, people also fighting. I know in California, they've made those vaccines this is a very hot topic. It's, it's I have to nice. be careful to open my big Sag <laughs> mouth here. Um, you know, yeah. making all those mandatory vaccines, it, you know. Uh, it's just, to me, it's so ironic that it's California that's doing it. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, maybe I some know. of the major drug companies are there, but I mean, I don't, I don't, I honestly, I don't get it. Yeah, it's California. It. I know, it's California where people are way more enlightened. You know, there's a... At least that was the thought. Well, and it's Jerry Brown, you know, but, but uh, yeah, they, you know, know, they're one of the biggest industries in the world. The farm, It's the war industry and the pharmaceutical industry who control the world. Uh -huh. You know, maybe the Catholic Church, but right. we don't even know how much money they really have because they don't pay any taxes <laughs> and they never have. Um, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So... Yeah, they're under so much pressure and they control everything and they, you know, they'll probably threaten to take doctors' licenses away. Right, right. You know? Yeah. So, you know, unless you're willing to somehow step out of the yes. the fold there, you're kind of screwed, right? Um, yeah. But that's pretty bad. And and people are so brainwashed. So that's Neptune and Pisces. Right. So those who are brainwashed into believing, you know, whatever it is, you know, you're an extreme Muslim, ISIL, whatever, Daesh fanatic right. or you're the bible thumping you know anti-abortion whatever right. christians i mean they're both two sides of the same coins you know that's all coming to a head right you know very much well so. i think we're going to go to an early break this okay. time and we may walk through the rest of it but it's just because there's someone crying at my door i hear that i know so we are going to go to a break you okay. are listening to news for the heart and we'll be right back hi i'm Lori houston and i have a great show on bmajor.org called news for the heart. I'm an intuitive counselor, coach, and teacher with professional qualifications and certifications, as well as natural clairsentient and claircognizant abilities. I've been on my spiritual path for over 20 years, and during that time have acquired through extensive studies, teachings, and sacred texts, over 30 different healing modalities, which are continuously being added to as life is an ongoing journey. My passion is on relationships, limiting beliefs, energy that is blocking you, and awakening consciousness as we become more heart-centered. You can find out more about me at my website, intuitivesoul.com, or call me at my toll-free number, 1-855-444-SOUL. That's 1-855-444-7685, and I'd be honored to connect with you. Let's get to the heart of what matters. Do you want to become more empowered, connected with your core? guided by your heart and soul's purpose, be more balanced and have more mindfulness? Are you searching for the answers, wanting to understand your relationships better, why your intimate relationships, friends, family, and even work colleagues can impact your quality of life? How your relationships interfere with your business, career opportunities, and even starting your own business? I'm Lori Houston. I have a free weekly advice column with bmajor.org called Heart Lessons. Our hearts have the power to free us from pain and the struggle that keep us from awakening to our true essence. You can send me your questions or for more personal guidance, contact me at intuitivesoul.com or call me at my toll-free number 1-855-444-SOUL. That's 1-855-444-7685. And let's get to the heart of what matters to see your heart lessons. 
Want to know where you can hear Lori Houston's news for the heart? Well, that's easy. You can tune in to Lori via Clear Channel's iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, and at bmajor.org. Now, back to Lori Houston and news from the heart. Welcome back. This is News for the Heart. I have Tara Green with me. Tara is, as I said, a friend as well as an amazing astrologer. And, well, we're very similar in our tarot, so we'll just say amazing tarot as well. (laughs) Sure. Okay. We have a mutual admiration society here. Okay. That's always good. And so it's tarot, Tara Tarot. Dot com. Dot com. Oh, that's cool. That's good. That's a good name. That was good. Is there name. a hyphen in there for today? No. Oh, cool. No, but Very but everybody good. gets tongue tied on it for some reason. Tara Tarot. Well, Tara Tarot. I can see it. And it was sort of given to me. <laughs> Somebody put it in print that way, and I went, "Hey, I like that. Okay, let's yeah, use no, it." That's great. That's so, great. Okay. So where were we? Okay, we were talking about the astrology of this year. Yes. So I just wanted to give people a little visual thing here. So uh, you know, I, uh, the tarot is also going through a huge renaissance. Oh, can we see is that? that? The tower? No, that's oh. the hermit. That's the hermit. Okay, this is the Toth. Oh, I'm trying to straighten it out here. Toth here, so you can see it. Let's get it there. Come on, guide my arm there. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's the hermit, a little bit crooked there. There we go, hermit. Okay, the hermit. so the hermit in the tarot. Um, this is a, the Toth deck is not a very traditional deck. And no. the tarot is going through this incredible. Crowley, right? Yes, Crowley, the, the, which I know he has a bad reputation, <laughs> but uh, a lot of that was also put on to, to sort of throw people off. Okay. I can't speak for him personally. You know, nobody's a, a saint in this earthly plane. Not too many of them here. Yeah. But um, but the work uh, done by Lady Frida Harris, it took five years to make all the paintings, was really incredible. Right. Oh, well, I, so, his, yeah. that tarot is... It's, it's one of the earliest, the deepest uh, yeah. psychological tarots. But now, anyway, now there's a renaissance. There's thousands of different tarot decks. They sell this one at Urban Outfitters that everybody's oh, yeah. crazy for. So, you know, it's cool. um, so it's very popular. So the Hermit, Virgo. So... The answers are within. Now, we were talking about... The um, other thing you mentioned mm-hmm. about Virgo and Pisces, um, the North Node and South Node that's right. is also... I haven't gotten there yet, okay. but that's well, okay. Well, you can bring it yes. up. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> Whenever. <laughs> okay. So so talk about the astrology signs. Um, yes. So if you are a Virgo uh, or wherever Virgo is in your chart, that's where you're expanding. There's optimism. You want to take a risk. That's, because that's of Jupiter. the feel good because of Jupiter. Okay. So once every 12 years. So Jupiter is related to the Chinese... Uh, astrology as well and we're going to go into a fire monkey here which sounds kind of like fire oh, monkey just the okay. sound of it you know what do you think when you see fire monkey it sounds like <laughs> you know there's gonna be like angry monkeys angry all monkeys over. or winged monkeys or i don't know playful monkeys mischievous monkeys mischievous, you know maybe, monkey yeah. mind monkey mind on fire that's what i think you know so um anyway oh, all right here, huh? um, i didn't even know i didn't fire even monkey yeah this year yet. yeah yeah okay. okay so then we're talking about sagittarius okay so in the tarot, where are we? There we are. Okay, the sign of Sagittarius. <laughs> I can't do this here. Sign of Sagittarius is, I keep turning it the wrong way. Oh, it's because we don't want to get the reflection. Okay, it's called temperance. Traditionally, it's the number 14. Uh, oh, okay. In the deck, I That's use That's Sagittarius? Sagittarius. Okay. So the symbol of Sagittarius is associated with this card. I think we have a visitor here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sagittarius is related <laughs> to animals as well. So he knows. Um, Jasper oh, knows. Sorry. Okay. So the sign of uh, Sagittarius is in the Toth deck called art, oh, and it is a okay. symbol of alchemy. Okay. And really, this is an alchemical year because in Latin, the term solvet, coagula, means dissolve and consolidate is really like Virgo Pisces. You know mm, what I mean? Whereas okay. Virgo is solid and, and you know, hands-on, it's earth. Uh, Pisces is dissolving, it's water, it's the ocean, the ocean of bliss. So so I think it's a very good symbol, actually. So, you know, balancing the inner masculine and the feminine. We were talking about mm-hmm. Mars going retrograde a little bit there. Um, it's a symbol of the sacred marriage. Mm-hmm. So it's a really nice symbol to have um, Sagittarius, Saturn and Sagittarius, because wherever Saturn is, that's the reality check, you know. So balancing the inner masculine and the feminine is good. Kind of inspiration, optimism. You know, Sagittarius is, you know, the archer, the centaur, aiming his arrows higher, pointing to the galactic center. So, you know, we need to have that so new vision. New on the couch that's not usually there. So <laughs> no, he's going into my couch. He's going into my uh, <laughs> coat there too. He likes my coat. Okay. <laughs> All right. I remember that's where you put it. I was like, oh, oh. that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> All right. So alchemy, turning lead, that's Saturn, literally, into oh, gold. Okay. And the gold is the inner light. 
that yes. the hermit is trying to find. Right. Okay. So this is all very, it works very well here. Now, um, the symbol of Saturn in the tarot, actually, because there's different planetary, thank you very much, <laughs> uh, different planetary and uh, signs there. So the sign of Saturn is the symbol called the world traditionally oh, nice. or okay. the universe. Okay. And there's always a beautiful. And that's also Saturn? Oh, that's Saturn. That's Saturn. So oh. the symbol for Saturn really? itself is the world. I did not know that. Or the universe. Okay. okay. So really it's the end of the journey. It's number 21. This is where after reaching enlightenment, after the soul goes through the whole journey from the fool, zero. And Saturn's there to help us. Saturn's there to help us because <laughs> Saturn is the reality check. We came through in the physical dimension as souls to be embodied. So this is where you go get back off the mountain. You had your vision. It's like, you know, chop wood, carry water, do the laundry, you know. Um, that's what it's about. You know, it's embodying your spirituality mm. in every day that's jupiter and virgo mundane every day every moment you got to prove your stuff you got to just be it mm. you know so i think it's really kind of kind of a beautiful thing now um neptune the planet of the dreamers okay the shamans yeah. the planet of illusion delusion glamour hollywood uh, you know hollywood is totally neptunian literally projection okay literally projectors i always thought it was so and which card is that this is the card of the moon Oh, it's the moon. Okay. Number 18. Nice. Okay, the moon, Pisces. Yeah. So, but this is the oh, dark okay. side of the moon. Yeah. Okay, so this is the dark side of the moon. So, you know, in the progression of the tarot, you know, what the tarot really is, is a the progression that a soul has to go through archetypally through 22 symbols to come from pure manifestation through to the end, the world and back again. Okay. Okay. So this card here, the moon is after the star, which is Aquarius, you right. know, where you get that sense of cosmic mission i know what my mission is i've had my vision and then you go through the fear <laughs> so this is the card of fear this mm. is the dark night of the soul okay okay this is where you feel abandoned or neptune? alone this is pisces okay pisces i know Pi you know all the all the signs have <laughs> have you know positive pisces. and negative okay. yeah so this is in the tarot of the moon is pisces so this is where i always imagine it as um you know the child who's fully formed and you know is being born and you're going down the, the birth canal and it's right. dark and you're right. going what right. the hell is going on here and I don't really know what's going on but I have to trust because you right. can still hear your mother's heartbeat and you're still coming from the light into the light but it's a big unknown it's a big unknown so there is some fear there mm -hmm. so that fear of the unknown so a lot of people are going to have to face that you know what's real what the hell is really going on here right. so that's really Neptune and Pisces you know with Saturn okay. so um, a lot of people may escape into the downside of Pisces, more into okay. the illusion, the delusions, the addictions. Like, I don't want to know about this. You know, they're going to take the, right. the wrong pill there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and go, hey, I'd rather be, my mother used to say that, you know, ignorance is bliss, you know. Um, sometimes I don't want to know, right. you know, right. it's a bit too much, right? But, you know, Pisces is the realm of the imagination. And with Saturn, they're making it real. It's like you have to be very, very careful with every thought here because mm. instant it's kind of like instant karma instant manifestation okay okay so you have to be very conscientious that's virgo you know very practical very nitpicking and the other thing about jupiter and virgo is not being too nitpicky there's a whole perfectionist streak to that okay. as well so you know we can see in a way neptune opposite uh jupiter there there's already been this kind of you know women's body images you know mm. nobody everybody doesn't have to look like that totally you know size zero model all that's yeah, changing yeah. body image so that's good you know loosening up so it's very creative so i would say you know the symbol of sagittarius in the tarot is literally art so creativity is a big way to move through things it's non-logical you get out of your head you're okay. you're using the pure inspiration and the creativity right so the need to kind of the word sacrament is coming to me right yeah. now so what does sacrament mean to you well i think I mean, it, it means to me is seeing things more from a blessing perspective, like seeing, taking time and being grateful and being, you know, seeing things as sacred instead of um, just kind of, um, you know, taking everything for granted and just kind of going day by day and not really moving into that sacredness of, of life. And I think that's you know become so important um that we kind of forget it 
Like we kind of taken everything for granted. That's what I think of when I think okay. of sacrament. I mean, obviously there's the religious context of it and I don't really think about that, but yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I, and I think it's important. So to me, this whole, the, the whole Holy Trinity here of Jupiter and Virgo mm. and uh, Neptune and Pisces and Saturn is very much about the sacredness of the everyday, the mundane. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like really sip your tea and do that consciously and really, you know, slow everything down. You know, I think a lot of people are going too much Facebook, too much of all this yeah. stuff. I can't deal with it. It's just a total distraction. It's really, what do you get for it? You know what I mean? It takes you out of your life. It is fantasy and illusion. It is that yeah. Piscean thing, you know, it keeps you from being present. Hmm. So I think, you know, this is all, it's all very good for us to kind of slow down. And a lot of people were wanting to be doing that. And also, you know, in your work, very much is your work a sacred thing, right. you know, right. and a lot of community and a lot of stuff like that. So in the tarot, Jupiter, the wheel of fortune. So Jupiter's the wheel of fortune. So again, cool. optimism, positive energy, that's all good stuff too, you know? So I would say also, um, it's a good year for women uh, in politics. Oh, yeah? I don't like Hillary Clinton, uh, oh, no. personally. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, no. Don't tell me. No, and, no. <laughs> Yeah, and that, that's really interesting. The whole 2016 election, you know, um, and I'm usually really good at this, but it's been a big blur. I did see Hillary there initially, okay. um, but I still think that there's going to be some weird God knows what. Mm -hmm. There may not even be an election. I, I really feel oh, like there's a whole other really? thing that's going to come in here. Interesting. Very weird. Very weird. I mean, I thank God Bernie Sanders is there. It's like amazing to me that he's there, Okay. that he's even in public, that he's you know, got millions of supporters and things, right? That would be amazing. I, I want a miracle to happen in <laughs> Bernie Sanders to win. Um, but uh, yeah, for women, so a big year for women to get ahead. A lot of um, publishing going on, a lot of changes I in. A, I have a chapter in a book coming out oh. in April. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, that's that's cool. exciting. Yeah. yeah, that's really exciting. Yeah. Power of the Heart is my chapter. Oh, nice. <laughs> Okay. That's great. Mm. So I would say, you know, for the first part of this year, Jupiter in Virgo, it's like, get all your stuff done. Take care of the details. Jupiter's going to enter Libra um, in but September. Okay. okay. So then the last three months of the year there is going to be very different energy in Jupiter. It's very much about the balance. It's about peace. It's about negotiation. So, so I would say that it seems like everything's going to hit the fan until kind of then. And there's, you know, the eclipses this year. Oh, yeah. And then the North Node. Okay, yes, the North Node is in Virgo. So Virgo is very much the sign that's getting most of, of the attention. yeah most of the attention this year. And the North Node and Jupiter are almost conjunct right now. So again, late oh, okay. late Virgo. And the South Node in Pisces. Now Pisces is the last of the signs. So again, right. with the Hermit, it's about endings. Um, it's about completion. And Neptune and Pisces, which will be there still for the next number of years, yes. it's also about endings, letting go. It's about okay. karma. So because a lot of Pisces, because it's Pisces, it's mm. source. It's going back to source. Uh, it's like the world in a way, but the pragmatic part of the world. Um, with Saturn and Sag, it's also very much karma. Right. So uh, I think past life regressions. You know, Neptune is in Pisces. A lot of people are want to want to go back and delve into their past to clear that. I think that's going to become much more popular. And Jupiter and Virgo is also um, with with Saturn and Neptune sound healing, mm, uh, all nice. of that becoming way more uh, vibrational healing. You know, yes. all of that, ima you know, just using the power of the imagination, long distance healing, all of those things are going to get uh, much more mainstream. You mm. know, yeah. Mm. And there should be big change in the in the healthcare system mm. as well. Uh, new legislations for that, probably in the states too. I think people are not too happy with. Right. Obamacare, although I think it's generally a good thing, but uh, right. you know. Um, so the key with this year is really to stay flexible, hmm. to stay flexible and to really lots of meditation, lots of cleansing, lots of cutting back, lots of nice. not running around too much, you know. Um, I mean, Saturn and Sagittarius loves to travel. I think, I think it's going to be hard to travel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, well, Saturn and Sagittarius is traditionally lots of airplane crashes. Oh, um, okay. And okay, and well, Saturn. <laughs> you know, Saturn is right now uh, going to cross the U.S. ascendant. That's okay. happening in the next few days, so that indicates karmically a brand new twenty eight twenty nine year cycle for America. Oh, so that's one okay. cycle. Okay, and also um, Uranus and Pluto are still in their cardinal squares. We talked about that a little bit, right? So um, there's something else. 
I don't think we did talk about that. Did we talk about the, oh, we were talking about it before maybe. Maybe. Okay. So Uranus and Pluto, it's not over till it's over. Um, they're still oh, in their cardinal. The, oh, right. They're still yeah, in their yeah, cardinal squares. So, so that's <laughs> still happening. That yeah, that's okay. You don't want to know that. Okay. But you know, so as for signs, you know, the cardinal signs, Aries and Capricorn and Cancer and Libra are still being pulled in that pressured to move, to change, you know, and, and so, you know, the corporations, that's Pluto and Capricorn, you know, they're not going to want to let go. I mean, the dark side of all this is more plutocracy, more corporate, okay. you know, takeovers, which is, does yeah. seem to be happening. You can't sort of, you know, this is the whole thing. The reality check is Saturn, you know, is this really real or isn't it? You know, you right. got to look at what's really happening and get into the truth and do your investigations. And, and a lot of secrets will come out, you yeah. know, this year, right? Um, that's what I understand. But yeah. yeah. And that's a good thing. You know, so more so people too. like Julian Assange and, um, you know, Edward Snowden and, and things like that, right? Right. Coming, willing to risk it all, right. you know, for the sake of that altruistic, that Saturn and Sag, right? Yeah. So, you know, Sagittarians, they have to grow up. They have to be more mature. Right. You know? Right. Um, <laughs> well, if it only just affected the Sagittarians. <laughs> but it affects everybody, you exactly. know. So again, it's like, what you know, where's Sagittarius in your chart, you know? Right. Where's Neptune and Pisces, you know? Neptune and Pisces is a long-term, you know. Right hall still right right okay so and then the opposite of all that is gemini so gemini's are kind of in the the empty leg there of that whole t-square so gemini's are going to get are getting a real pounding this year oh really well because what you what you look at is like a t-square you know like is jupiter and virgo i don't know if you can see this so jupiter and virgo on one hand and right. neptune and pisces opposite and, and then oh, saturn and sag so there's a little oh. pyramid there right so opposite the pyramid oh. is the one that's really getting pounded because they're getting all of that energy interesting you know gemini's who don't want to grow up they're going to be forced to you know or that area in your right. life where you know i can't make up my mind i can't commit you know mm. and saturn and sag is you have to do your taxes you have to be really honest so any right. going court dates any of that stuff you know any right. in, in you know information out there you have to be careful right about that too right. so um what else should we talk about now yeah we didn't really you mentioned the north node south node okay north node so the north node takes about um a year and a half right. to transit through a sign so it just entered virgo right so the north node for everybody who is a virgo especially it moves backwards um will be yeah, affected it's, it's like the only one that moves backwards right well, it sort of moves backwards and forwards, but it generally moves backwards in the zodiac. No, no, all the all the signs move backwards as well. Well, when they go retrograde. No, 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 no. There's something called the precession of the equinoxes. Uh huh. So we're in the age of Pisces. Okay. We're going to move into the age of Aquarius, although nobody knows exactly. Right. Although traditionally, the age of Pi uh, Pisces started at Christ's birth. That's okay. why Pi that's why Christ is the symbol of the two of the right. fishes because right. that's the symbol of Pisces. And all of the ages, all of the religions are based on astrology, which right. was originally astronomy. Right. So watching the stars was really the first religion. Right. So we're moving from the age of Pisces. Right. So the signs move backwards. So Aquarius oh. precedes Pisces. That's true. Right? right. So at some point, although I think probably 2023 is when the age of uh, really? Aquarius then, starts. Eh? Boy, well, Pluto moves really into Aquarius. <laughs> uh, Saturn's <laughs> going to be in Aquarius at that point, too. Oh, okay. So when? Well, Pluto moves into Aquarius in 2023. Actually, oh. Saturn Saturn might be in Aries by then. Um, but I know that Pluto enters uh, Aquarius at that point. Okay. Okay. So, so you think that's a signal? Well, you know, actually, if we're talking about future, future 2020 is going to be one heck of a year. So really, really I would say, the you know, the four-year plan now. 2020 in... is like a huge shift. Um, okay. Because Jupiter and Saturn do these 20-year cycles, and they last okay. met in early Taurus okay. in 2000. So they're getting ready to make their next conjunction mm. in 2020, along with a whole bunch of Saturn, a whole bunch of other Saturn. Pluto is going to like, really, the shit really hits the fan four years really? from now. So, you know, depending on how you want to see that... Okay. You know, I mean, people are predicting, you know, you really should, you know, get rid of your debts, you know what I mean? And, right. and most people are, you know, in debt up to the, the yin yang there, you know, and really start to, to simplify your life so you can survive, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think it's going to be, it's going to be pretty crazy, but then, you know, we'll, we'll come out of it, but it's going to take a while, you mm -hmm. know, it's going to take a while. Interesting. It gets, I find, honestly, it gets harder to really focus on one 
yes, bam, that's going to happen because there's so much more information and so much more consciousness. So the realm of probability, you know, it is like quantum physics, you know, we, we see that we're more aware of it. So the probability factors are like multiplied by a hundred. So, you know, it's like a little game here. If somebody moves one thing here. Oh, okay. Then we're moving yeah, over here, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's always shifting, you know, one minute it's like, you know, if you don't pay attention to world news, wait, okay, so Saudi Arabia is not talking to Iran right now and Russia is backing Syria and who's doing what and who's on second and you know what I mean? Like if you follow all that stuff, it's like, what's going on? It's shifting all the time, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, you have to stay centered. Yeah. You have to stay Got centered. It. You have to listen to your own inner wisdom. Got it. So, okay. Well, um, we go to break. And we'll okay. come back and we'll have a new talk. Okay. So you are listening to News for the Heart. I have Tara Green. You can go to taratarot.com or myself, Intuitive Soul. And we'll be right back. Want to know where you can hear Lori Houston's News for the Heart? Well, that's easy. You can tune in to Lori via Clear Channel's iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, and at bmajor.org. Now, back to Lori Houston and News from the Heart. Welcome back. This is News for the Heart. We've been getting to the heart of what matters with regards to 2016. So we did a lot of astrology stuff. I did a lot of astrology A lot of stuff. astrology. Okay. I think you still want to talk about the eclipses. Yeah. And I thought I would also bring up something. But yeah. why don't we talk about the eclipses okay. first and then we'll go into Well, I just want thoughts. to talk about, you know, because, you know, I don't know how much people are going to remember about this. But the first solar eclipse of this year, there are four of them this year is on a supermoon. It's on March. Well, there's the two sets, but the second set actually has a third. There's three in the second set. This year? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Yeah. Are you sure about uh -huh. that? Okay. I, you know what? Interestingly, I saw two different variations on that. Oh, really? Because one, I saw that there was three in the fall, and one, I saw that there was just four. Like, usually there's four. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, two. With, like, two of the, yes. But two yes, so there's solar. five. So, yeah. There's five. Okay. That's funny, because I double-checked that, and I, I saw it some way and not others. That, okay. We'll have to double-check that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So uh, that's that's Jupiter and Virgo. Make sure you double check all your facts. <laughs> or Neptune. Or Neptune going, what the with hell? You know, are, am, I, am I imagining this? Am I losing my mind? Exactly. So you're going to be asking yourself that question a lot. Um, so yeah, four, Mars retro, four Mercury retrogrades this year. And that's maybe mm. to make sure we have our head screwed on, right? Right. Uh, one more than usual. And then this Pisces solar eclipse on International Women's Day, which is March the 8th, a supermoon. Um, so I think that's very significant because, you know, the astrology really is, you have to pinpoint the timing. So it's a super moon for women, you know, to come out of the closet. Nice. You know, Pisces is the closet, you know, it's the 12th house, it's the oh, unconscious. Okay. So oh, you're waking right, right. up your dreams, you know, the feminine always represents the anima, the soul, very much waking up your slumbering artist, your imagination. We got to remember it's alchemy, it's art, it's creativity, it's dance, it's movement, it's singing. It's right crystals it's sound healing it's dreaming nice. you know dreaming awake it's very much a shamanic year hmm. so i really want to think about it also as a vision quest you know if people um a vision quest is traditionally a native tradition where people step out usually it can be like in australian societies it would be at puberty usually it's just for the boys okay um but women do it too so there's usually a, a female kind of rite of passage right. if you've read the red tent that would be a kind of a get welcomed into the red tent officially as a woman when uh, you get your first period. Right, right. Um, and then there would be a kind of vision quest where you are left alone, kind of secluded or sequestered or up in Manitoulin Island. There's a famous place there where mm -hmm. uh, natives go on vision quests at Dreamers mm -hmm. Rock and they put prayer flags in the trees and you would sit out all night, at least for one night, naked with a blanket, nice. having fasted mm -hmm. and literally crying for your vision. You would, you would set up your sacred circle and mm -hmm. stay up all night or four nights, usually four nights or longer. Wow. So I think, you know, everybody needs to go on some kind of a vision quest, even if it's just in your home, right. uh, where you just, you know, I'm incognito for at least 24 hours and I'm, what do I need to do? And just that one question, you know, where am I going? What's my dream that needs to be awakened this year? Right. What do I need to purify in myself to bring that dream to birth? Nice. You know, what do I need to manifest in the world? You know, Saturn, the world. You know, so this is a big one. A lot of people are really going to wake up and go, hey, I can't do that job anymore. You know, I have right. to run off and do this, you know. So I think that's a really good thing, you know. 
mm. for people to, to do that. So a lot of change. That's again, that's that mutable. So, um, but you were saying, what did you feel this? Year well, was about? I did a, I, I lead a, um, a heart centered support group with a friend in the States and I did a channeled meditation and in it, we were talking about, um, or it was being brought up that this year was really about um, finding your authenticity and and just shining your gift to the world. So it kind of fits in with your theme of what we're doing, but you know, really becoming more authentic and um, whatever that gift is that we sort of it's it's the gift is really who we are. It's not really you know what's your gift as in are you. You know, an intuitive or you a know. gifted something. Yes, it's yeah. it's really the gift of us, like mm -hmm. us as who we are, and to become more authentic and to just not try to you know do things for other people and mm -hmm. you know to make people like us or whatever, but mm -hmm. just to be us mm -hmm. and be that gift and and you know shine that light on yeah. on on the world. Yeah. So stop being you know this person that's you know, trying to make everybody like us or, you know, that. Well, that's when we'll get to that in Jupiter and Libra and we have to deal with that, right? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> we'll be back that's to that right. One, you see? That's right. Because Libra is all about yeah, relationships. Yeah, all about you, honey. What do you want? <laughs> you know, how can I please you? How can I please you? I want you, you to think I'm nice. <laughs> you, know? Um, you know, the other thing is, but, you know, the gift is the present. You know? Yeah. Uh, and, um you know, spirit always speaks in puns, which I always thought was really quite wonderful. So the al the really alchemical work, you know, is really to transmute um, all of that heavy, the lead, the fear, which right. is like the moon, um, the discipline. But it's our fears that stop us from being authentic. I mean, it's That's our right. fears that, you know, yeah. it's, so, it's fear that does yeah, everything. So, <laughs> so I would think also, you know, Saturn um, and connected to Sagittarius, you know, Sagittarius is the galactic center. So I think there's a strong sense of meditating on the very essence of our solar system here, you know, the galactic oh, center, you know, okay. the black hole there. Um, there's also something called the great attractor, which is the center. They don't even know what it is. And it's so vast and so huge. It's kind of drawing everything to it. Okay. And it's in Sagittarius and Saturn mm. is also going to cross that uh, point. And it's opposite the star Sirius. So it has to do with the U.S. The U.S. has its ascendant on that point, actually, really? interestingly enough. I keep thinking they were all astronomers and, you know, uh, who started all this. That's why they chose all those points. But, you know, Sagittarius is really about beyond where you are, the, the vision beyond, but then manifesting it. Okay. And it's a collective vision. You know, right. uh, the galactic center is so vast. People have planets connected to it at 27 degrees of Sag. Get little bits of information downloaded, but... They all have to get together. So there's that sense of community as well, right? Mm. So, um, yeah, we could do a, a tarot reading. That might be a nice idea just to see um, what the message is. Yeah, just a today, little one right? for... Okay. All right. Cool. So I've got my special crystals here. We're going to clear the cards. Okay. So, um, so Laurie, is there a special focus or... Just ask whatever it is we need to know about right now from spirit. Okay. It's a message for today. All right. Okay. All right. You know, I could pull a 12 cards here. How about that? It would be okay. sort of one from each month. Okay. So. Oh, okay. How about that? Sure. So let's say for January, we've got the nine of discs. So the nines again. Uh, the nine is the fulfillment on the physical plane. You know, the discs are always money reality so this is the time to kind of manifest what you want to have maybe financially or physically in place um at the end of the year because you know in january people are always thinking about the end right. as well okay february we get the ten of wands here so oh, again it's wands. i thought it was swords <laughs> ten of wands which is saturn and sagittarius is it really that's yeah. funny so you know there are mundane cards i wasn't going to get into it but of course because the tarot always works in this wonderful synchronistic way it's saturn and sagittarius now traditionally on the deck that i use they have words and the word says oppression so it's the end of oppression mm. so oppression in the world the end of our own self-imposed oppression which is jupiter and virgo is like that inner critic that's always nah, 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 nah. you're not good enough this isn't good enough okay. so an end to that nice okay which would be nice yeah freedom okay so then we have March here. We've got the Ace of Cups. So the Ace of Cups is always new beginnings in terms yes. of relationships, uh, opening up the heart, you know, be ready, being ready to receive. 
And the receptive part is important. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we get to April. Now, this is the card of Sagittarius. Hmm. So, uh, April, spring, um, new adventures, new ideas, lots of new fire, new energy. Um, sort of Sagittarius has this wild energy, you know what I mean? Yes. It is the centaur. Right. And they're kind of untamed, like like Chiron was the, the most civilized, you know? So there's a sense of letting your wildness out, you know what I mean? Nice. Um, April. April. Yeah. Okay. So then we get to May. Another, look at all the Sagittarius energy here. Okay. <laughs> so this is the sun in Sagittarius. Okay. So, so you're saying wands are? Wands are fire. Okay, right. Wands are fire. Right, right. Fire is always spirit. Yep. yep. <laughs> okay. It's the sun. Okay. Yep. It's inspiration, inspirited. Yep. Uh, it's ephemeral. So it's action. It's masculine. Right. Okay. All right. So May. Um, this is the card of the sun in Sagittarius. So again, good humor, optimism, positive energy, seeing beyond what's going on right here. But you know, because it, we're dealing with Saturn on another level, it's like paying attention, right. uh, but being inspired. Whatever's going on, no matter how horrible it is, you have to be able to laugh at it. So in a way, it's like, don't take any of this too seriously. Right. You know what I mean? Okay, that's and good, that's also kind of depth in the sign. Pisces of going, you know what? This is all an illusion anyway. <laughs> you know, we're all really still connected to the source, imagining we're these, having this big holographic adventure over and over and over again, just to, you know, channel it back, you know, broadcast it back to the creator. You know, right. we're just big radio libraries anyway, right? Right. None of this is real, really, on some there level. There you go. Right? That's the truth. Okay. <laughs> All right, so then we get to June. Ah, we have the card of death here. Okay, so June, the death card. All right, um, Mars change. will go back into Scorpio. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a kind of a replay here. Of, I know it was kind of hellish last summer when Saturn was back in Scorpio there for the last while. So yes. you might want to think about there's still another, you get another chance. So this year is always, it's also kind of a year of a second chance. And how often do you get second chances? That's pretty much of a gift. Right. So whatever emotional stuff that we still need to go back and finish off and dredge up and go deeper with, this will be the time to do it. Uh, hmm. So a lot of change, I would say. Right. At that time. Emotionally, endings of relationships. Maybe your adventure isn't going to work out and you have to change. Remember, it's a mutable year here. Right. So July, we have the card of the emperor. Nice. Nice. So the emperor is Aries energy, fire, new beginning. So after the death, you know, new beginning, owning your own power. That's pretty powerful confirmation of yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would say then you own your own power. So a lot of freedom, a lot of liberation, a lot July. of new beginnings here. Okay. July. You need to learn to serve the people, hmm. which is Jupiter and Virgo. So you can't be egotistical. Okay. Hum humility. We were going to talk about humility, right? That's Remember right. I said, oh, yes. okay. Year of humility. Um, no ego, you know, really getting rid of the ego. We're all just right. servants here, you know? So really humility is a beautiful thing. You know, that's what the Tibetan monks and, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's not myself doing the healing. I'm not even talking here. I'm right. just basically a channel and we're all channels, you know? Right. Okay. So August we get... The sun in Aries. Okay. Mm. Lots of fire here. Notice it's been like fire, 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 fire. Yeah. Okay. So again, ah, new inspiration, new beginnings, new collaborations, you know, lots of fire, lots of inspiration. Then we get the magician. Hmm. Okay. Mm. For September? Yeah, yeah. For September. Okay. Um, There is the eclipse season starts in September. The magician is kind of then a preview for where we're going to go collectively in 2017, which is the number one year, the, the year of magic. The magician. Oh, yeah, the magician yeah, yeah. is consciousness. So it's the mind. It's the ability to visualize, to realize that, you know, you have the magical wand to create whatever it is you want. So right. using your conscious and your unconscious mind. So again, magician is like you're juggling. It's mutable. Again, all those possibilities, you know. So so it's kind of a, we're just sort of starting. I'm getting the sense of starting and um, beginning to do the magic. Okay. And then October, this is the princess of wands. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the princess of wands, the princesses are considered to be the earth manifestation of whatever the element is. Okay. So it's the earth of fire. You know, you can relate the tarot cards to the I Ching if you're into the I Ching as well. So she represents a goddess called Pasht, who's like a lioness. She's like okay. totally fearless. You know, she's like, forget it. Nothing's going to stand in my way. It's like, and that's October. Nice. That's October. So nothing can stop you. Okay. 
And then we get to November, which is the Princess of Cups. So interesting, two princesses there. Nice. Um, so don't be a princess, um, <laughs> but <laughs> be, or be a humble princess. Right. right. Uh, okay. Yes. The Princess Look of Cups. Your definition of princess. Yeah. Yes. The Princess of Cups is actually really beautiful. I don't know if people can see this here. Yeah. Uh, very beautiful symbol. Um, it's about clarifying what you want emotionally, which is really the okay. key. Okay. And there's beautiful symbols of the turtle, uh, the shell, the swan, the lotus. So the crystals, you know, and dolphins, very beautiful kind of energy. All right. Oh, wow. November. Okay. And then we get to November. We get the princess of discs. Oh, my. Wow. All the, <laughs> no so wonder you said I said that. it was the year oh, of the my. feminine, right? So there yeah. we go. Okay. So the princess of discs, that's earth of earth. Okay. Now. Uh, they also rule different times of year. So she's like Capricorn energy. Okay. So we're getting close to That's the end right. of the year here. Which is accurate. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Everything's aligning. Okay. And she's pregnant and she represents winter. So it's when everything's in hibernation. Everything's still in that seed form. You know, it's still got to be nurtured and it's very, very grounded. She's like the mm. earth of earth, yes. most feminine, the most stable in fact, everything. So again, it's very much like the symbol of the universe, you know, coming back to earth. Yeah, to December, the last one. That's okay. Should we pick another? I get a nice spiral here too. Um, should we pick well, another one? Oh, this is December. Sorry. Yeah, this is December. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Ah, aha. <laughs> okay. The hangman. The hangman. Can we man. see the hangman? Yep. Now you can. There's the hangman. There you go. Okay. Now for people who don't know the tarot, um, the hangman always sounds pretty scary and everybody always <laughs> wants to turn the hangman upside down. They so, do, which is funny. Which is funny. Now, <laughs> the hangman is really traditionally related to the Nordic god Odin, mm. who was hung upside down on the world tree oh. uh, to get the wisdom of the rune stones, apparently. So it's, it's about inverting your ego. Again, it's about turning your mind or your mental self Good into the earth year again, to do into that the anyway. earth. Yeah. And it is like water. It is an emotional baptism. Okay. It's about surrender. Hmm. It's about letting go and saying, you know, not my will, thy will. And so I, so this is a really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. So learning to let go, that's very much at the end of the year. Humility, the ultimate humility is, you know, I'm not in charge here. Right. You know, I give it up to a higher power, but you have to have that connection. Right. Otherwise you're in fantasy and illusion, right. which is that Neptune and Pisces thing. Wow. So I would say that's really, really powerful. I like that it a lot. Is. Nice. Yeah, nice. Nice. So four major cards. That's right. So again, that sense of balance, working with all the elements. I think it's beautiful, actually. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, nice. I like it. I do too. Yeah. So it should be an interesting year. Should be a very interesting year, you know, and, and we all live in these interesting times. And I feel like, you know, people are going to be gathering together, people of like minds and like vision, because we need to strengthen that vision. Right. Um, I feel like that's really I like to say too. like hearts, but like hearts. Aw. <laughs> of course. <laughs> like hearts like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of very much homeopathic, right? Mm. And heart heart kills heart. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. So finish up all your work this year. Okay. Make sure you get your, get get it together because we're going to go into the magician year in 2017. Oh, okay. and that should be really interesting That's too. Right. So nice. yeah, own your power. Let go what does not serve you anymore. Right. Start a new adventure. Get clear hmm. about what you want. Well, you've heard it here, <laughs> <laughs> and you've been listening to News for the Heart with Tara Green. Find out more about Tara. Go to her website, Tara Taro. Dot com or myself, Lori Houston at intuitivesoul.com. Thank you very much. Oh, thank Karen. you, Lori. It's been we'll wonderful to, come to back. be here. I will. I'll All right. To, and definitely sure. every year we'll do okay. a nice, okay. what the year is going to be. And apparently next year is all about the magician. Yeah. <laughs> New beginning. this one's good too. <laughs> it is. Okay. Well, it's always important. It's right? always important. Yeah. That's all right. Great. Okay. Thank, thank you. you so much. Blessings. Blessings. Have a question for Lori and want to be on the next News from the Heart show? Drop us a line via instant feedback at bmajor.org. News from the Heart is brought to you by Intuitive Soul and is produced by Major Radio for Clear Channel's iHeartRadio and bmajor.org.